Last year, when I was writing why Starfield was my favorite game of 2023, I called it something of a flawed masterpiece. A game I loved dearly, but I fully understood it had shortcomings and I could see why some players had a hard time accepting it for what it was. One year later, the core of the game is still mostly the same. If you didn't find the fun the first time around, you probably still won't like it. But what has changed is the addition of significant quality of life improvements, a land vehicle, and creations which add significant amounts of content to the game. These changes meant that for me, Starfield has firmly planted itself as my favorite Bethesda Game Studios title, my favorite game of the generation, and in my opinion, one of the greatest games of all time. With the upcoming Shattered Space expansion coming on September 30th, as well as a commitment from Bethesda for more updates and DLCs in the future, I think now is the perfect time to return to the game if you dropped off. And if you've never played the game before but are interested, there is a truly great experience here that's just waiting to be explored. So what's changed since the game released last September? Well, first off, there have been a lot of quality of life updates. Improved local maps and performance modes are two of the biggest additions as well as some gameplay modifiers. Though by far, what's changed the game for the better are creations and the recent Revate land vehicle that allows you to quickly traverse planets instead of simply running and boost packing across them. Starting with creations, these are essentially mods that range anywhere from simple quality of life improvements to complete game overhauls. These are mostly fan-made content, though Bethesda's creation engine is so easy to work with that modders are able to make dev quality content and upload it for anyone to use. For my current playthrough, I have about 40 or so creations that range from subtle changes like improving icons and adding new weapons and apparel, to substantial mods like one that completely changes the planet Mars to look like it's being terraformed. It's really kind of difficult to express just how crucial these creations are for the future of the game. These are mostly free pieces of content that make it feel like Starfield is more akin to an ever-evolving experience rather than a static RPG. And I've only scratched the surface of what's currently available to download, with more content being released and planned every single week. I could easily see myself investing hundreds more hours just based on the content available in the creation store alone. On the side of developer-made content, our very recent Bethesda made addition has been the Rev-8 land vehicle that allows players to traverse any planet much more quickly than previously when everything was on foot. This is a welcome addition, and makes exploration much quicker and feel more natural. It doesn't fundamentally change the design of the game, but it's still a massive quality of life improvement. So those are the additions, but what really hasn't changed? Well, if you had issues with Starfield's core design and technical limitations at launch, I'm afraid to say nothing's really changed there. You still interact with the map a lot to get from planet to planet. There still isn't interplanetary flight, and you still have to wait a few seconds as you load in and out of areas. The exploration is mostly the same, if not a little sped up due to the Rev-8. If you didn't want to play a game that required patience to find interesting content, you probably wouldn't find anything different this time around. Personally, I never had much of an issue with Starfield's design, as I'm willing to look past some of the limitations because of how much I enjoy the rest of the game, but I understand that not everyone feels the same way. I do believe, though, that there is a way to play Starfield incorrectly, and I'd encourage anyone returning to optimize their experience by hopping from solar system to solar system instead of spending too much time on the same planet. It can get boring if you land on a barren landscape and just wander around aimlessly. After playing for dozens of hours, I began to learn that the best way to play the game was to quickly move throughout the world and look for points of interest that were unique or find ships or NPCs who may provide me an interesting quest or memorable interaction. I believe Starfield hosts some of Bethesda's best story moments and random encounters, but you have to be willing to look for them. Starfield released to great reviews and great player numbers back in 2023, but it faced a lot of pushback in the following months. There's a variety of reasons this happened, and to the extremes that it did, including genuine criticism and feedback from fans, as well as disdain for Bethesda, Microsoft, and a perfect combination of toxic negativity that surrounds many big game releases. The fact that the game was seen as Bethesda's first big Xbox exclusive post-acquisition didn't help either, and that left the game feeling completely torn apart months after release. Fortunately, the game is good enough that a solid player base has persisted across both PC and Xbox. The game is currently among the 25 most played games on console and is the best performing BGS game on Xbox. The game averages around 10 to 15k concurrent daily on Steam, a very respectable mark for a single player game that also has to contend with the fact that the game is free on PC Game Pass, which potentially has a substantial amount of players as well. There was a sentiment at the lowest point of the game's warped online perception that the game would never recover. That's clearly not the case, as the game has slowly but surely climbed the most played charts this year as updates are released, and that is before the first major story DLC drops. 
The future of Starfield is looking incredibly bright as Todd Howard has confirmed future DLCs after Shattered Space and has vowed to support the game for a long time after regretting not having done the same with Fallout 4. It's safe to say that Bethesda sees the value of supporting games for a larger period of time as they have spent years doing so with previous games, but they clearly want to have more meaningful post-launch support going forward. The combination of developer-made DLC as well as community-made creations should ensure that Starfield has plenty of content for years to come. It also seems a little obvious that the game will expand its user base eventually by heading over to the PlayStation 5. There are, of course, no current plans announced to do so, but with Xbox continuing to release their own first-party games on PlayStation, combined with our own reporting on the subject, it's probably a when, not an if, at this point. As for when exactly what happened, uh, no one really knows, but I'd guess sometime next year, in between Shattered Space and the next big DLC drop. I genuinely think history will be much kinder to Starfield than its initial few months were when it was unfairly heralded as the most important release in Xbox history, and was forced to be something that it wasn't. It's a game I truly love, and a game I want to play daily, but I know it isn't perfect, and that's okay. The game is, in my humble opinion, near perfect for the types of experiences I like. A title full of customization and the ability to blaze your own path. No two play sessions are the same, and some of the best moments I've ever had in gaming have happened while playing Starfield. With the amount of content being released for the title and the consistent feedback from the community, the possibilities feel endless for what Starfield could be 5, 10 years from now, and I'm excited to see where the game ends up. Are you still playing the game a year from release? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching.